Hello ladies and gentlemen, PlayAsia helped me afford this game so I'm going to have to advertise for them just a little bit. If you go to my link in the description to PlayAsia, you can buy something and help me out. And you can use the coupon code BLUEVITA during checkout to save a little bit off your order. You gotta use the link and the coupon at the same time, it's a bit weird, I know. I also have to thank my patrons, Ali, Ali? Alan, Billy, Blizz, Brett, Caleb, Chen, Christoph, David, Edia, Eric, Gary, Joey, the other Joey, Christopher, Matthew, Miguel, Mathaldu, Raymond, Rodrigo, Sag Chief and Z for their support, and if you want to support me on Patreon, that link's in the description too. Thanks for your support, enjoy the video. It's my chair creaking under me, god damn it. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I'm here checking out... Well, I hope it's obvious. Man, we all knew I was going to get to this one eventually, but, well, we'll see when this actually goes out. The schedule for videos recently has been quite packed. I have several backup videos waiting to go up, and I've still got several backup videos in the wings that are from when I stopped doing the Vita Weekly updates, so whatever. We'll just go and we'll have a look at Earth Defense Force 5, because why not? All of my time has been in the online mission mode, and just like in the previous games, the progression between them is actually split, which is actually kind of annoying, because that means I have to go into the online mission mode, but thankfully I can block other people from entering. But, of course, as always, you have your two-player split screen, your offline mission, and your online missions. Now, this game actually has the most missions of any EDF game ever. I believe it has 110 in the single-player campaign. And there is also more in the online mission mode, which is ridiculous, because six hours in and I'm only on mission 30. So, yeah, there is going to be a lot of time put into this game just to get through it initially, let alone the whole, let alone the whole playthrough of multiple times with multiple characters sort of thing they got going on. So, we got online stuff and, like... Honestly, this game is super iterative over Earth Defense Wars 4.1. I feel like it's made on the same engine, and it's more or less the same game. Like, there was a massive difference between Earth Defense Force 2017 and Earth Defense Force 4, and there was a, only a small difference between 4 and 4.1, but at the same time, you know, 4 and 4.1, 4.1 was basically just an enhanced port. So, can't really argue too much about that one, but... Earth Defense Force 5 feels so similar to Earth Defense Force 4 in so many ways. Or Earth Defense Force 2025, I should call it. So, we're going to create a room, and we're going to make it so that nobody can get in. So, I'm going to make it room name only, because why not? And we have, of course, other mission packs. They will be releasing DLC missions, but at the same time, 110 missions just by default is ridiculous. Of course, we can select our mission and we can select our difficulty, but notably this time around, you can only do easy, normal, or hard the first run through, which stops you from doing the old trick from 4.1 backwards, where you play the game through a little bit on normal, then you'd go up to hard, then you get the weapons from hard and use them to do the level on hardest, then you get the weapons from hardest and use them to do Inferno, and therefore shortcut your way through the majority of the game's progression. That is definitely not a thing anymore, which is a little bit disappointing, but nothing that we can really do about that, in all honesty. I've just been playing on normal, because when you play on the online stuff, it actually makes the game slightly harder, even if you're just by yourself, so there you go. And of course, you can change your set phrases and turn off the weapon and armor limits once you've gotten to a certain point. Nothing too out of the ordinary, so let's just hit create a room, shall we? So... We can change our class and equipment, and of course we got the four usual classes. The Ranger, who is your all-rounder ground troop. The Wing Diver, who's mainly focused on DPS. Air Raider, who does mostly things like airstrikes and long-range bombardments and stuff like that. He's also the most vehicle-tastic of the four. And the Fencer, who is basically just a walking weapons platform. So, they are all relatively similar to how they were in Earth Defense Force 4.1, but there have been a few notable changes. So, if we hit up the Ranger, for example, you can see that we've got his two weapons as always, and the, it's the usual set of stuff. Assault rifles, shotguns, sniper rifles, missiles and rockets, grenades, and special weaponry. And, notably, the newest thing here is the support equipment. This is how you bring along tanks, helicopters, and bikes. If you're playing as him, you can also bring along these new kinds of support equipment. 
and these actually give you some extra abilities. As, as you might know, I'm not actually that far into the game yet, so I don't have the really cool stuff. But even just this stuff is kind of neat, like this one here. Item acquisition range, plus 100%. When you're sprinting, that makes it so you can basically wipe up everything in a small street. And of course, there are also things like making you be able to move faster. I think there's ones that help you take less damage. Like this one here, for example, makes you move a little bit faster when you're hit, which is actually surprisingly useful in this sort of game. But I'm just going to keep the bike because it's the best thing I've got at the moment. Everybody's got a new thing like this. So the Wing Diver, for example actually has a new core system that gives you some special abilities or it can just give you like a better sense of charging your energy. I am actually going to equip the Rush Core, that sounds very useful. The Air Raider doesn't actually have anything in the way of this, they mainly just have vehicles in their, third, in their fourth slot I should say, but thankfully that means they don't have to worry about carrying one around anymore and they also have their three main weapons to boot. We also have, of course, the Fencer, who gets two slots, and he can only take along one of each type. But he can also get things like an Inch Shields, Cannons, and Exoskeletons, which is great, because it gives you just a little bit more variety in how you want to play the good old Fencer. So we're just going to play as the Ranger to start off with, because why not? Uh, anything more interesting I can use in a cave that isn't a rocket launcher? Oh, I've got the Goliath. About bloody time I got a decent rocket launcher. These games are kind of stingy when it comes to rocket launchers in the very beginning. But yeah, uh, we'll just play with the Goliath, because why not? And the Raven is a good enough assault rifle for now. So, of course, we can change our settings while we're here. We can also use text input if we feel like it. We can also send invites and stuff. It's it, it's all almost identical to 4.1, so if you've played that before, you know how that works. We do, of course, have settings. This one actually set me off a little bit, because... I actually played the Japanese version of this, I just imported it just on a whim and played through a bit of it. I didn't finish it, but I did play through a bit of it. And of course you got sound effects, background music, and voice volume. These are actually identical to the settings I had it set in the Japanese version, and I don't know how they pulled that one off. I thought the two separate games would have separate save data, but I guess not. You can also change how the sound works, which is neat. So you can make it so that the radio audio comes through surround, frontal, every speaker, which is nice. You can turn off the screen shake, which is actually something I'd recommend once you're far enough in the game. I'm going to leave it on for demonstration. You've also got rotation speed and I don't even know what the hell lerp is, if I'm being honest. You can invert your look, you can turn off the camera effects, so you make it so that when it snaps off to another thing that's happening in the level, it doesn't actually do that, which is nice, but I'll turn that back on again for demonstration's sake. And you can change everyone's controls, which is nice. So you can change pretty much everything that they do. Again, this makes things like remote play a lot easier, because you can just, you know, change the controls to whatever you feel like, for every class to boot. So, it's nice, because again, every class in this game actually plays significantly differently, so you'd probably want them all to have different controls, especially the Fencer due to all of his different little abilities going on right there. So, yeah. That's all well and good. So let's go hop in. Completion rate 2.75% after 6 hours. I just need to run, run that home. So here we are. Yeah, it's basically 4.1 again. More or less. Of course, there are some new things, like, for example, say hello to the new Hectors. The gigantic frogs. Yes, I'm not kidding. You can actually blow their legs out from under them and knock them over, and this will actually make them uh, immobile for a small period of time. At which point, you can get up close to them and just wipe the floor with them by blowing their heads off. Their heads are actually a weak point in this one. And you can even blow their, um... You can even blow their arms off, and if you blow their arm, if you blow the arm that's carrying the gun off, they won't actually be able to use the gun. So of course it would be an absolute lie to say that there hasn't been absolutely nothing new in this game. And some of the additions they've made I actually really appreciate. But yeah. The the whole thing going on with the new Hector replacements right there is actually great. I wish I'd played through the entirety of the Japanese one just so I could give you a more in-depth look at the game, but I just, I ran out of time. I had stuff to do. There's, it's just, with Earth Defense Force, 
five being, being as long as it is, I just I just don't have the bloody time anymore. It's kind of ridiculous. I'm I'm adding this to the list of games I want to play casually, but the list of games I want to play casually currently includes Persona 5, Onrush, Earth Defense Force 5, and Super Smash Brothers. And that's just games I've been able to get my hands on in the past week. So yeah. Except for Persona 5, of course, that's been sitting around for months, but I've just been trying to get around to playing it. I've got about seven hours in it, but whatever. Anyway, let's get back to the actual thing about EDF. So if you haven't played EDF before, what is it? It is exactly what you see on screen. Earth Defense Force is actually a pretty apt title because you are part of the Earth Defense Force, which is basically just shooting aliens. More or less forever. With no... There's no, like... I don't want to say there's no seriousness to it because they take it entirely seriously. The story isn't told entirely seriously. But it's all done with a sort of charm. A sort of really, really cheesy charm that just makes you love it. And this carries through onto the gameplay because most of the weapons in this game are absolutely huge and ridiculous. In fact, if you haven't seen Earth Defense Force before, picking the Air Raider, um, not the Air Raider, picking the Ranger might not have been the best idea just purely because of the fact that he is the least ridiculous uh, trooper of the lot. Sure, he's got things like these massive rocket launchers, grenade launchers, these ridiculous assault rifles with 200 bullets per clip, but he is still the least ridiculous of them all. Mirror, mirror on the wall. So... Yeah, you've got four different classes in this game, and they are all arguably pretty damn ridiculous. Like, the good old, um... Oh, he's still alive. Shit, I should finish him off before he becomes too big of an issue. Just get up close to his crotch and just drive home the point. But yes. So yeah, you've got four different classes. you got the Ranger, who is, as I said before, your on-foot guy. He has a bunch of really basic weapons, and he is more or less just the foot soldier. Nothing wrong with being the foot soldier in this game, because it means you're effective at everything, and you have the ability to take down pretty much anything that comes at you. Everything else is a little bit more specialized. The Wing Diver has actually been nerfed a little bit from her Earth Defense Force 4.1 in, in um, appearance. Basically, she's got a rechargeable energy tank, and she uses that to power the majority of her weapons. However, most of the weapons in this game have actually been remade so that she actually has to charge them from her energy pool before she can actually fire them. This does help in certain situations, but for the most part it makes her a lot more situational than before, because she needs to be able to charge her weapons, fire them, and then get out of harm's way all in the one tank. And this is a problem with some of the weapons that she has, which makes it kind of useless to go with her sometimes. Which is really kind of disappointing, but at the same time, I kind of understand why they did it. Mainly because of the idea that the Wing Diver could just wipe the floor with the Ranger in pretty much every sense of the word. There was not a thing that the Ranger could do in 4.1 that the... There was not a thing that the Ranger could do in 4.1 that the Wing Diver could do better. However, there have also been buffs given out. Like, for example, the Ranger has that sprint ability now. It's only slightly faster than his dodge roll, but there is actually a benefit to it. That little grey, whitish circle that appears on the ground when he sprints, that is an area of effect item pickup. So you can actually run across, like, a big pile of item pickups, and it will grab all of them, instead of forcing you to go and get every one of them individually, a la 4.1. Actually kind of useful in that regard. So I will give them a fair bit of credit of adding something to the Ranger that actually makes him slightly more useful. However, the default binding for this is actually on the L3 button, which makes it kind of hard to use because you have to hold it down. So it can be kind of hard to get into a good sprint most of the time. I have remapped it to L1, and I've remapped Zoom to L3 because you only have to press that once. And I find that to be a lot more comfortable. Other than that, though, the Ranger hasn't seen any other significant changes. He does have the ability, of course, to call vehicles as he likes and all that. But, you know, other than that, not that different from 4.1. All good. So, yeah, as I was saying about the Wing Diver... You do need to be a lot better with her energy conservation because she can and will run out of energy at a moment's notice. 
and it can end up with you being in a bad spot. So you do need to just be a little bit careful about that one, but thankfully she does maintain some ridiculous power. Her Dragoon Lance, for example, is able to kill things in one shot and bring the froggy dudes to their knees and all that. But again, considering that she is lacking in the way of lots of energy, she's not going to be able to do a lot of different things at once. She's not going to be able to load up a weapon and move a lot at the same time. It's just not going to happen. So you need to be a bit... You need to be very wary about your energy conservation when you're running as the Wing Diver. But this also makes her a lot more of a challenge. However, this also does provide her with a lot more destructive power. One I'm hoping to unlock as we go on, because it can be kind of hard to start up as her in this game. So, you, you do end up in a position where it can become kind of difficult to actually start out with her, because she has low health, she doesn't have the best weaponry, and she doesn't exactly have the ability to use her energy effectively to start off with. So, she can end up in a position where she isn't really that great to start off with. She gets better, but she doesn't exactly get the long end of the stick when it comes to at least starting out in this game. This is, however, helped out by the change I absolutely appreciate the most in this game, in that the weapons that you get are shared around between all four classes this time. This is huge. Now, it's not particularly massive. Like, you're not going to get... Like, if you pick up 12 weapons, it's not going to be 12 weapons for every class. You'll get 12 weapons for the class you're running, but the rest will be... The rest will be... Let me, let me try that again. But for every class that you're not running, they will get roughly 25% of what you picked up. So if you picked up, say... 10 weapons, for example, you might get 2, you might get 3 on every other class. I think it's a bit random. But, this makes things so much better for making sure all your other classes are actually prepared to fight. Because even with just a small handful of weaponry, it makes it so much easier to get into the whole swapping classes when you feel like it. Especially if you're planning on going online, because swapping classes when you... Not only when you feel like it when you're going online can be a bit of an issue because you can end up in a position where you end up with really bad weaponry and nobody wants to play with you. However, if you are playing with on Earth Defense Force 5, you can have a bunch of weaponry saved up. It not, might not be the best weaponry, but it'll be definitely be better on a base level than the weapons that you are given by default on those classes. This also extends to armor. Uh, most of it will go to your main class, but you'll get about 25% of it, roughly, on your... There we go. You'll get roughly 25% of it on your other classes. So you can end up with a bunch of characters. You can end up with a bunch of your classes not having fantastic armor, but enough armor to make it work. Oh god, I'm going to get my shit kicked in. This isn't great. Well, I do a lot more damage than I remember. Probably because I was, like, directly in the path of that shit. Let's finish these guys off. Oh, God. Let's finish these guys off instead and see if I can get some health pickups, because goddamn. So, in case you haven't been paying too close attention, to be fair, I don't blame you. This is Earth Defense Force. It looks chaotic from the outside. You have multiple different kinds of pickups on the ground. You have health pickups, which are the small boxes and the big boxes. The small boxes give you about one-sixth or one-fifth. I can't remember exactly of your health back. It's not much, but when the enemies are fairly likely to drop them, you can resupply pretty easily. The other two pickups are your armor and weapons. And as I've said before, your armor and weapons... Oh my god, it's a shotgun. God damn it. Yeah. The other two pickups are your armor and weapons. One armor will get you one health point. So you can see that my health is actually at, two, at 361 right now. I've mainly been playing with the Ranger. So his health... Damn, that's it. That's the end of it. Unfortunately, since I'm playing single player, my mates can't come pick me up this time. So, oh well. I tried and I failed. Thankfully, I do still get some of the stuff. It depends on your difficulty level. But we're just going to retreat so we can play as a different class. 
I got a Stork and a Flamethrower. I also got an upgrade. But as you can see there, all four of my classes got armor. I didn't get enough weapons to start spreading the love, but yeah. So yeah, all four of my classes got armor, and even some of the weapons I already had actually got damage upgrades and just general stat upgrades, which is actually a really nice feature. I quite like that a lot because it makes it very useful. Uh, let's pick something a little bit more interesting. We'll pick the, uh... Plasma Cannon B. That'll do. And the Rush Core also works. So we'll play a stage as the Wing Diver, because why not? Uh, we'll play, uh, we'll play, um, not Red Drones. Uh... Reinvasion, why not? But yeah, as I was saying... Yeah, the other two boxes you can pick up with weapons and armor and they get spread out at the end of the mission over all your dudes, but the main class that you're playing will get priority. So, yeah, you want to be picking up as many of those boxes as possible and thankfully you get plenty to play around with in the sense that you have lots of opportunities to go around and pick stuff up. So yeah, this is the Wing Diver and as I said... Her main ability is... Her main weapons are all, or mostly, based around the idea that she actually needs to charge them up first using uh, energy from her... Her, her bloody uh, plasma core. So you need to... you, But you also move around using her booster. Her booster gets you up in the air and gets you out of the way of danger. This is multiplied by the fact that the wing divers don't actually get that many health points. They have their rate of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Their rate of collection is actually a lot lower than your traditional. Their rate of collection is actually a lot lower than the ranger. So you get a lot less health and you also start out with less health. You get like 150 versus the 200 that you start out with, with the ranger. So you need to be surprisingly careful. And considering that most weapons in this game now operate on a charge basis instead of a reload basis, it means that you need to be a lot more specific with, uh, a lot more precise, I should say, specific. A lot more precise with your positioning of your weaponry with the Wing Diver. Because as you can see, I'm running pretty damn low on, I'm running pretty damn low on the, uh, energy core already, so I need to be extremely careful with how I go about my movements, because if I'm not, my engines will overheat and they'll have to reload and that might get me stuck in the middle of a gigantic swarm of absolutely maniacal ants. So, I need to be very, very careful about how I go about things. So yeah, let's just talk about Earth Defense Force in general. The action. So... There is a massive amount of shit going on at all times in Earth Defense Force games, and that's what makes them fantastic. It's a gigantic horde of beasties. There are massive amounts of beasties. There are beasties that come from the air, there are beasties that are on the ground, there are beasties that are giant ants, there are beasties that are giant spiders. There are beasties that are giant red ants, they'll pick you up and eat you for lunch if you let them. And there are way more, like judging purely by Earth Defense Force 4.1's monsters, there is more to come, because there always is. So, th there are always the mainstays of the ants and the spiders. I wonder if the Rotarius actually makes a return. I don't remember if they do, but yeah. There are lots of different monsters and beasties and just things that you need to go and defeat. And there are always massive swarms. There is never a time in this game where you are not going through a horde of like 50 enemies at once. It can be kind of ridiculous. So... Basically, the idea is just you pick up your weapon and you fire it at the enemy. That is all you do. That is all you ever do. And who can argue against this when it's so cool? There are massive amount, amounts of effects and they've really upped the ante on this one with the effects because considering that this is the first entry that has been made natively for current generation consoles, that means that they have a ton more performance power to work with, which means they can eke out a ton more effects. Things like ants just get absolutely destroyed, their guts go all over the place. Transport ships can explode in a massive fury of flame, they... everything comes apart at the seams and it just looks amazing. It also looks like it was on the PlayStation 3, but this... 
This isn't a bad thing because you can tell what the most important thing is, and that is making the biggest and most the biggest and most terrifying hordes possible, and they have done a fantastic job with that. This also, of course, comes with the game's general performance concerns. This isn't 4.1, so they definitely have a bit more in the way of frame rate slowness in this one, and since there isn't a PC version yet, your extra hardware can't make up the slack. I am playing this on a PlayStation 4, and it really... a uh, PlayStation 4 Pro, I should say, and it doesn't really help that much. So, yeah, you do have to be pretty wary about frame rate drops. They are a thing, but thankfully this game maintains the whole thing about the engine for Earth Defense Force actually being really well coded, and responsiveness stays perfectly normal throughout even the biggest of frame rate drops. And considering that a fair amount of AAA game developers can't even get that to happen with their engines, when these guys made it happen years ago on the PS3 with 2025, it can be kind of silly to have more responsiveness in this game where the frame rate can constantly hit single digits. But yeah. One thing I should mention that the Wing Diver actually got is this boost ability. This is new, this is not in 4.1. And this boost ability is actually really cool because it means as long as you're willing to give up the... As long as you're willing to give up the, um, you know, the boost power, the plasma core power, it means that you can get yourself out of a lot of situations. So it makes you a lot more maneuverable. But again, it's all about giving up that... It's all about giving up that extra power in order to actually make it happen. So, you just got to make your choice. Do you want to be as maneuverable as possible? You probably want to go with the Wing Diver. Do you want to be a walking weapons platform? You want to be the... You want to be the, um... You want to be the fencer. Do you want to basically stay in the back, call down airstrikes on everything that moves? You want to be the air raider. Do you want to just be a jack of all trades that can do most of the above? Then you probably want to be the ranger. It's nice because there is a role for everybody and you can pick whatever role you damn well please in this game and you can play it. And thankfully, the story around the whole thing is just as cheesy and wonderful as it always was. This is a defense force after all. So there's always, like, there is this tone of seriousness going on throughout the entire game, but the voice acting is done with that sort of goofy, cheesy charm. And as was point, uh, I, I, I admit I'm going to steal this next paragraph or so, and by paragraph I mean speaking, I don't actually script these. I'd be amazed if I could script uh, an hour-long video, but nevertheless. The... The thing about Earth Defense Force is that it plays like an audio drama in, in terms of its story. You don't actually see most of the story play out. You're basically just dropped in an area and told to kill everything. The story of the Earthlings fighting back against the invaders is told entirely via the speech. So you need to more or less be listening to the game via the... Um, you more or less need to be listening to the audio logs. They come up throughout every mission. There's a bunch of characters that stand... There are a bunch of characters that stand out. They are introduced. They are told their purpose. And some of them are absolutely hilarious. Like, there's this one who goes on about how we've overcome things like skin color. And we've overcome our differences to win the fight. And we need to do that in order to survive and maintain our humanity. While at the same time... We're getting our shit kicked in repeatedly across the world. It's been five months. The negotiation teams have all failed. And we are just... We need to kill literally everything in order to actually stand a chance to live. And it's just kind of a hilarious juxtaposition in that sense. But of course, you've also got characters like the leader of the ADF trying to give sort of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Trying to give speeches. You know, just the sort of... We, we will... We will win, we will survive, we can do this sort of speeches and all sorts of 
silly jump like that that, you know, basically it's just you on the ground doing it in, in your entirety because Earth Defense Force. And it's still enjoyable in the same way that it was in 4.1. You just got to take note that, well, again, it feels a lot like 4.1 because it basically is 4.1. Like, that, it's basically a reboot. They're doing the entire thing over again, more or less. So, you, it's basically just the Ravagers are coming to take us out again. It's not like 2025, which was a outright sequel to 2017. It is its own basic universe reboot at this point. So, don't go expecting Storm 1 to turn up or anything like that. You are a civilian at the start of this game, actually. But, again, after the time skip, you are more or less just a basic Earth Defense Force soldier. But, yeah, it's... It's 4.1, again, more or less. So, you know, expect nothing new, you'll get nothing new. But to be fair, why fix what isn't broken? Like, it worked absolutely fine in 4.1, and 5 is basically just the same idea over again, but with more, with more stuff in it. I don't know anyone who would object to this, or at least anyone who's actually a fan of the series. I mean... Iron Rain is coming next year, which will actually do, like, a fair few things differently. But at the same time, most people aren't that big of a fan of the Western spin-off Insect Armageddon because it sucked. Thankfully, this one's actually being done by another Japanese developer by the name of Yukes, who, if you don't know the name, they're responsible for the WWE titles. So, who knows? Maybe that game will be a bit different, but... Earth Defense Force 5 is exactly what you expect from Earth Defense Force. If you watch a video from Earth Defense Force 4.1 and just add on, like, things like the little extra abilities that all the characters have and all that, you've more or less got the game in a nutshell. So, that's cool and all that, you know. Being able to just literally just say, go watch 4.1. If there isn't enough footage of 5 for you, go watch 4.1. It's basically the same thing. And again, I don't object to this in the slightest. As, a, as someone who's been playing... Earth Defense Force since 2017 Portable, but actually took the time to go back and play the originals on PS2. I can't complain in the slightest. Basically, it feels absolutely like EDF, and of course, EDF is just a gigantic go beat the shit out of hundreds of monsters and these gigantic swarms and these massive aliens and just enjoy the carnage. The weapons are simple, but thoroughly satisfying to use, especially when they can bloody blow these enemies to smithereens and bloody chunks. The overall quality of the game itself is still pretty damn up there with the gigantic ragdoll physics, the, the buildings just exploding into flat pieces, and of course, the fantastic voice acting, which is, you know, just absolutely wonderfully cheesy. It is Earth Defense Force at its core, and I love it. Because it is, of course, Earth Defense Force. Let's go play as the Fencer for a mission, shall we? Uh, let's see, can we actually... You know, let's put up... Let's give him a Ion Mirror Shield. Sure. And, uh... Okay, we've got a Jackhammer. What can we give him? Uh, we'll give him a Dispersal Mortar. Why not? Just as a... Just as a way to demonstrate his abilities. So let's pick another mission, shall we? We will play... Yeah, monsters are spotted in this one. Oh. Okay, never mind. Hang on, we'll play something a little bit later. Surprise attack at night? No, that's still not, still not enough. Damn it. Iron Wall. Sure. I'm gonna die, but... <laughs> sure. Why the hell not? Let's do that. So the Fencer is arguably the most unchanged character in Earth Defense Force 4.1 and Earth Defense Force 5. It's actually kind of strange. Like, everybody else has gotten either a relative debuff or just a general buff, but this guy just doesn't seem to have gotten that much in general. It's kind of bizarre, but I mean, oh well. Nothing wrong with that. He, he, he worked fine as he was, and he's actually a surprisingly capable character in the grand scheme of things. Like, I'm not going to do too well going up against these guys from this distance, but... Yeah, let's just, um... Let's get out of here. 
but we won't allow that to happen. Hang on, I will. I'll just mortar them for a bit. Back away, let it reload. Let them get in closer. I'm gonna die very quickly, but that's a good thing because this video is getting ridiculously long already. And we kind of need to speed this up. So yeah, the fence's main ability is to die. <laughs> the fence's main abilities are mainly just boosting around using different boosters on his weapons. He's also got two different sets. He can't actually go and hop into things like vehicles because he's so big, but he's got all sorts of different mortars and weaponry in order to actually make him work. So yeah, he's good at what he does. I should probably show off a little bit more of him. So let's pick a mission that's um actually better idea. We'll change the mission difficulty to easy. Well, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, oh, didn't actually say. You know what? Screw it. Let's just go play the air raider because we need to. We need to move this along, and unfortunately, we ne kind of need that to. Um, we, we need to go and do something else. All right, let's not do Iron Wall. Let's do. Um, Mountain of Wedges, that works. But yeah, you get the idea. He's big, he's slow, but he does a lot of damage. And you do kind of want to more or less stick around your mates for that one. But yeah. So, Air Raider time. The Air Raider is mainly support. But there are a bunch of neat things he can do. He doesn't... He does have his own sort of detonatable grenade launchers called limpet guns. But we aren't actually going to be using them. We are going to be using the majority of his things. So, the main problem in 4, which was fixed in 4.1 and further uh, tuned up in 5, was that he had a lot of really slow attacks. Like, he has things that come from the sky. So he's got these gigantic um, airstrike attacks and all that. But thankfully, in 4.1 and, of course, 5, he has a lot of options when it comes to these things. He can bomb the shit out of people, and it comes relatively quickly. So you end up doing pretty well for yourself when it comes to bombings in this game and bombings and aerial weapons in this game because most of his weaponry can now reload without even worrying about having them equipped so you can just be constantly sw swapping between all your different weapons oh yeah these are spawn stacks by the way they are very important to kill as fast as humanly possible let's get our sentry guns up they will kill everything Yes, yeah, so, um, alright, let me, let me try and, um, explain. So, you've got weapons that reload automatically, like the 180mm cannon, and you've got weapons like the bombing runs that need to be, um, that need to be reloaded by killing enemies. Once you kill enough kinds of enemies, they will be able to, um, once you kill enough enemies, they will automatically reload. So, thankfully, you don't have to worry at all about things like... You don't have to worry at all about things like keeping your weapons out in order to actually reload them because the majority of them will reload in time by themselves. So you don't have to worry at all about that sort of thing. Let's bomb the shit out of this guy and uh, the tower while we're at it. So we just got bombed and now he's getting a bunch of cannon shots to the face. He just fucking disappears in the smoke. Oh, and here comes his mate. Brilliant. Thankfully, we can put our sentry guns out again. Open them up and take cover. Because we do not want to be in clear and present view of that dude. Thankfully, this ground is high cover, so he can't shoot through it to get us. However, we can try and beat the shit out of him with 180mm cannons. Because sweet. Yep, he's dead. Cool. So now we can focus all of our attention 
on taking out the towers. There are more towers and I probably will pull out of this mission once I've defeated the first few, but you get the general idea. He's mainly meant for hanging back, calling down airstrikes. He also gets vehicles and I have the Nyx Grenadier that's slowly building up. Again, you need to kill dudes in order to actually make it happen. But still, he is more, more or less meant for support, but they have more or less given him a lot more things to work with in this one. And again, if you play through as Ranger enough, you will eventually get enough decent weaponry to start using the Air Raider at least by himself. So, yeah. He is relatively usable in single player. Not easy. You do need to learn the patterns. You do need to learn to, like, not be an idiot at this game, which is why it's always best to start out as the Ranger. With that said, though, he is still pretty damn useful in the grand scheme of things. And if you want a good sort of team composition when it comes to things like the um, Air Raider, when, when it comes to things like online, you definitely want a bunch of Air Raiders at your back. You never want to forego an Air Raider. Good night. Sure, it takes a while, but, you know... There is something that's inherently satisfying to some about being able to play through an entire level of Earth Defense Force without firing a single shot yourself. Which is an absolutely bizarre concept, but the Air Raider lets you do it. Good night. Smack. That, that he's just dead. Like, there is there is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That is just death, destruction, and general... general chaos on a beacon. Now let's get close to this tower so that we can finish this off relatively quickly. Because not only do we have several weapons about to, go, uh, to show up all at the same time. Oh yeah, my, the NPCs in this game are actually pretty good too, but of course, when Inferno comes along, can't rely on them for shit. They'll die faster than anything else in the bloody game. Activate, and cover my ass while I take care of business around here. Of course, you do have split-screen multiplayer and four-player online multiplayer so that you can just, you know, play with your mates or play with some random dudes, as I've been doing for the majority of the game because, well, honestly, Earth Defense Force isn't as fun by yourself as it is with a bunch of dudes. And, as always, the online code in this game is actually pretty good. Like, I'm honestly surprised it's better than some games I've played that come from multi-million dollar developers. I'm, I'm not even joking about that. It can be kind of bizarre playing playing this game and having better performance than... Better performance playing with dudes over in Japan or in China in comparison... Or, you know, I'd probably do pretty well to them. But even playing with dudes like in the United States, because I got this game on the American PlayStation Network, so I'd probably be playing with dudes in the United States first and foremost. But, yeah. The performance in this game is absolutely fine. So, that's actually really cool. On netcode-wise, anyway. I haven't had any noticeable problems. So, you know, sweet. So yeah, uh, just to summarize, it, 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 it's, it's very iterative, but the few changes they do make, like nerfing the wing divers so that the ranger doesn't feel almost useless at times, giving the, um, giving the ranger a little bit of a sprint, giving her a evasion boost, giving the air raider a little bit more usability just in general, and making the fencer just, you know, be the fencer. He's probably the one who needs a bit of a buff next. Uh, but, you know, he's still he's still pretty damn good as he is, so it's not that big a deal. The only reason I got my fa face kicked in was because 
this game is actually harder in multiplayer normal than in uh, single player normal. But yeah, uh, I got nothing wrong with Earth Defense Force 5. It's Earth Defense Force again. Like, anyone who's, who's been playing this series for long enough should know that A, that's not a big deal, and B, that's exactly what you should expect, and C, it's Earth Defense Force, why fix what ain't broke? At the same time, though, boom. Good night, sunshine. At, at the same time, though, if you have Earth Defense Force 4.1, and if you haven't, like, played through that yet, for whatever reason you haven't played through Earth Defense Force 4.1 yet, uh, you'd probably be better off playing through that first. Like, there, there is really no reason to pick this one up over 4.1 if you already have 4.1. But at the same time... If you're a fan of the series, or if you haven't picked up 4.1 yet, and you're thinking, what should I get first, 5 or 4.1? There is no reason not to pick up 5 first. There is absolutely no reason not to pick 5 as your first Earth Defense Force game, because it is just... It is just better. Like, it is legitimately just an improvement, in general, over everything that the game has. So, I can't argue with the idea of... Just picking this one up first and rolling with it. Oh. Uh, turrets, activate. Thank you. Uh, cannon, blow the shit out of this one for me. Thank you. Oh, God. Friendly fire. Yes. Always a thing. Always has been, always will be. Must avoid. Let's get back up on the mountain. If I can crawl my way up there. Alright, we'll try and take out these towers here, and whether or not we succeed or fail, we'll just call it. But yeah. It's the same as it's always been. And anyone who really cares about the series knows that's exactly the point. And knows that trying to stop them from doing what they're good at probably won't end too well. Because it's Earth Defense Force, baby. Just let the NPCs take care of everything while I just. I'll just take this out from long range. Good shit. Good shit. Good, good, uh, one, good shit. Good shit. Uh, right, hang on. I need to get that in, and then I can tilt this like this using the right analog stick. And very easy to call it a good airstrike. Good night. And thanks to the fact that I blew up enough dudes, I immediately get to put, call in another one of those airstrikes. Because that is just fantastic. Do it. Oh, and I have the best timing too. Just boom. They all die. Let's just pull back. Let's not get, um... Let's not get spider. It's just satisfying to watch them just drop like harbingers of death and destruction that the green balls are. There we go. Alright, as I said, we're gonna call it. But yeah, there you go. That was a look at Earth Defense Force 5. Incredibly iterative, but it's Earth Defense Force, so that's the point. And what they've done here is absolutely fine. Uh, the swap to D3 publisher from XC doesn't appear to have affected the game's quality at all. The just the general action is all still there. 
All the little improvements they've made are all legitimate thumbs up from me for one reason or another. And I'm enjoying it a lot. And it's going on the casual game pile and I'm hoping I'll be able to play it some more. So there you go. This has been Blue Maxima and I will see you all next time.